The Vermintide 2 has five different characters, but none sport weapons quite as intimidating as Kruber. The Foot Knight is Kruber's sturdiest frontline class, bringing with it a ton of resilience, excellent consistent crowd control and a great choice of melee items. In this guide I'll go over a number of different ways in which you can optimize your steadfast empire soldier. Everything you'll see here was played on the legend difficulty, but skills down just fine to the lower difficulties as well. Let's start with the basics. The Foot Knight's inherent passives reduce the damage he takes and grant him additional stamina. To be precise, it adds 2 stamina, which is the equivalent of 1 full stamina shield. This means that the Foot Knight, at bare minimum, is working with 4 stamina shields total, which are of course used for defense, but also crowd control through pushes and damage through push attacks. The Foot Knight also has a defensive aura that reduces damage taken by himself and nearby allies by 15% and his activated ability is called Valiant Charge, which does just that. It charges Kruber forward, knocking over any enemies in his path. Valiant Charge has a cooldown of only 30 seconds, which is further reduced every time he lands a hit, incentivizing him to get more attack speed, and is also reduced rather dramatically every time he takes damage. Note that blocking attacks doesn't reduce the cooldown, but of course you'd rather still block than actually take damage. Now there's a few things to keep in mind with Valiant Charge. Having this ability on a low cooldown means that the Foot Knight inherently brings with him a lot of consistent crowd control, and this ability truly is a big asset to reducing the damage your team takes and should be used frequently. Valiant Charge will push back and knock over any enemy in the game, including bosses, with the one exception being Shielded Storm Vermin, which will only get slightly shoved. Unless cancelled, Kruber will also charge through any basic unit and only stops himself upon hitting a Chaos Warrior, regular and shielded Storm Vermin, or boss. I said cancelled, as blocking during the charge will stop you dead in your tracks, which should be used rather frequently, as doing a full charge will generally mean you will move yourself out of position. Instead, stand with your team, start up the Valiant Charge, and after about one second, cancel, which results in your enemies being knocked prone while you practically didn't move. Also, before you press Valiant Charge, make sure to hold block, which means that during the charge you'll be blocking just in case a stray attack happens to hit you mid-charge. So in short, hold block, charge, and block again to stop your charge wherever you want it to stop. Second, Valiant Charge can be done while reviving an ally, which further adds to the relatively safe revives Foot Knight can pull off. Simply start the revive and charge forward, guaranteeing that the revive will be successful and hopefully knocking down whatever remains behind. In short, Valiant Charge is a very low cooldown, incredibly useful ability with a ton of utility, allowing you to generally crowd control, save allies or simply reposition yourself. Keep in mind, if you are surrounded, there's a brief moment at the start of your charge where you are vulnerable to an attack, so if an enemy hits you the moment you charge, you will be staggered, take damage and your charge will sadly cancel. Lastly, Valiant Charge also interrupts the Chaos Spawn from nibbling on your allies, and if you position a boss correctly, you will be able to push them off the map, killing them instantly. Passives and career abilities out of the way, let's discuss weapon loadouts. As I've mentioned, Kruber has an excellent array of melee weapons, most of which are more than fine to use. Most. That said, if you want to play optimally, there's two in particular you should look at. The fine weapons are the one-handed mace and the two-handed hammer, both of which are identical to Bardin's one-handed and two-handed hammer versions, which I highly recommended in my previous 1.04 Ironbringer and Slayer guides. These are still good weapons, but Kruber frankly has better. If you particularly like these weapons, they will absolutely suit you fine, but honestly you might as well play Barden in that case. No, Kruber has exclusive access to the Halbert and the Executioner Sword. In general, I'd recommend the Halbert over the Executioner Sword, but if you are good enough, both will suit you absolutely fine. These weapons are more complex than most melee weapons, in the sense that your attack patterns are very important, and if you aren't landing consistent headshots with the Executioner's Sword, you will make little progress. Let's start with the Halbert. The Halbert is a rather safe weapon, because of the immense range it grants. Even though the dodge range is only average, due to the fact that you have a massive attack range, you'll be working with a very safe distance compared to most melee. It is incredibly fast, which synergizes very well with your career ability cooldown reductions, and means that even though it doesn't inherently stagger much, it is a competent weapon for dealing with hordes. It truly is very versatile. There's no scenario in which the Halbert is a bad weapon to have. Its main light attack has about 50% armor penetration, meaning it's fantastic to use against every enemy in the game. 
Now the way you want to use it is a little bit different than other weapons, as a result of its peculiar attack pattern. Against hordes what you want to do is perform a regular light attack and immediately cancel your chain by blocking, which you then keep repeating. Weaving in pushes whenever the horde manages to get too close for comfort or you aren't quite quick enough on the block cancel. Against elites and bosses however, you want to start off with a push attack, which in the case of the Helbert is an overhead attack, allowing for an easy headshot, which do stagger storm vermin and berserkers. You then want to follow this up immediately with another light attack, which interestingly jumps right to the third attack in the light attack chain, which is another overhead attack. You then follow this up with the first regular light attack, which again, the first light attack has about 50% armor penetration, which is higher than most. If you chain this three hit combo, you will take down elites in very rapid fashion. The heavy attacks and the stab attack on the Helbert are attacks you generally want to avoid entirely. The heavy only doing about 30% armor penetration versus the 50% of the light attack. Though, depending on the talent setup, the heavies do have a purpose, but we'll get to that in a moment. The Executioner's Sword is a very high risk, high reward weapon. If you consistently hit with headshots, this weapon allows you to kill elites faster than almost anyone else can. You'll one shot storm vermin, you'll one shot berserkers, you'll one shot hook rats, take down maulers in two hits, and chaos warriors in only three. This can be very valuable, especially if your team runs into a nasty patrol. During Horde, you'll want to limit yourself to mostly light attacks. The first two light attacks coming from opposite directions are almost entirely horizontal, allowing you to line them up perfectly with the Skaven or Chaos heads for solid Horde clear speed. The third hit isn't bad, but the angle isn't great, so this would make an ideal time to block instead and possibly do a push if you need some more space. The problem here, which the Helbert doesn't have, is that the moment an armored target appears inside the horde, you won't be able to cleave through, meaning that during that scenario, you either need an ally to take down the armored target, or you need to switch to a quick heavy attack, which certainly aren't quick. So in short, as a foot knight, you have a selection ranging from one-handed mace, two-handed hammer, halberd, or executioner sword, though if you are comfortable enough with the latter two, you'll definitely outperform the hammers, but they are more complex to use. Every weapon I didn't mention here either has far too little armor penetration, dodge range, or otherwise does nothing remarkable and isn't worth considering. Between Halberd and Executioner's Sword, I would generally recommend the Halberd, but if your team has especially weak elite clear, the Executioner's Sword is a great pickup. Simply a lot less versatile. When it comes to ranged weapons, one easily stands above all else, and Kruber doesn't have a lot to choose from to begin with. Between the repeater gun, the handgun, and the blunderbuss, the blunderbuss is by far your best choice. It has surprisingly accurate range, the most most damage potential, allowing you to one-shot virtually every special in the game, excellent cleave, allowing you to hit specials within hordes, and unlike the repeater and handgun, is a very fast weapon to snapshot fire with, which I find is by far the most important trait to save your allies and yourself with. In addition, with the proper trait, the blunderbuss will practically never run out of ammo, whereas the gun's options do struggle more. Neither the repeater nor the handgun are bad weapons, they simply do everything the blunder does, but a lot slower. Not to mention, the blunderbuss is also your best weapon to quickly build up temporary HP, which can be very useful at times. Now that we've picked our weapon loadout, let's go over the talents you want to be using as a foot knight. At level 5, you have one choice. Attack speed. Attack speed is by far the most important property to pick as a foot knight, and Onslaught gives you a full item roll of 5%. This attack speed means that with both the Halbert and Executioner Sword, as long as you properly utilize pushes, you'll never need more stagger against hordes. Furthermore, more attack speed obviously is more damage and less cooldown on your charge. Attack speed as such is both offensive and defensive potential. Bastion of the Reich isn't a bad talent by any means, 25% more health works very well, as a foot knight especially, since you take reduced damage, making every hit point increase more valuable, but it simply doesn't compare to the consistency that attack speed brings to the foot knight. At level 10, none of your choices are really fantastic, but you do have two choices. Build momentum increases your stamina regeneration by 40% the moment you perform a heavy attack. This is where heavy attacks become useful as a halberd. If you're fighting a horde, you'll be doing plenty of pushes, meaning you'll slowly run out of stamina. Following up a charge with a heavy attack then to refill that stamina is an excellent attack to weave into your rotation. With the Executioner Sword it works differently as you won't really be using this during hordes, but when fighting multiple elites you will always have this 40% stamina increase running, which allows you to more easily block them when needed. Again, it's not a massive increase. The alternative option here is Regroup. Regroup grants an ally 50% damage reduction for 10 seconds the moment you revive them. As a foot knight, you are, providing you play properly, very likely to be the last man standing. So if your teammates mess up, this is a great boost for them. Especially useful if you find you need to charge mid-revive often, as this opens your allies up more to an attack during their stand-up animation than a regular revive would. 
I would generally recommend build momentum. It's the only option that really helps you do your job better. And regroup is only really useful situationally when your teammates do go down. As for counterattack, this talent is completely irrelevant as the only time your blocks break with the halberd would be during a horde, which means you are doing light attacks, which means you are already attacking fast to the point where uninterruptible does nothing. Alternatively, you are trading with elites and uninterruptible is then only useful to get a swing in while they stagger, meaning hit you, and you should never be trading damage with an elite in such a fashion to begin with. At level 15 you pick an upgrade to your aura, and in a full party I would always go with Battle Drill. Battle Drill gives one full stamina shield which is generally the most useful for allies, and certainly the most useful for you. As a foot knight I would recommend 6 stamina shields total, this is a perfect amount for tanking and crowd controlling hordes, meaning you should never really run out. Baseline, Foot Knight has 4 stamina shields with a Halbert and Executioner Sword. This increases that stamina shield total to 5, meaning you now only need one more stamina shield from item properties. At level 20, we're picking Soldier Spirit. This is the biggest survivability increase you could possibly hope for, and the other two options are frankly terrible in comparison. And finally, at level 25, you have some more compelling choices to pick from. At first glance, Hold Ground seems like the most relevant upgrade to pick, giving you 100% block reduction for 10 seconds after charging. Ultimately though, I wouldn't recommend this. The main purpose of this talent is reviving an ally after they've gone down and you charge towards them. Remember, your charge already knocks down enemies, which is long enough for you to pick them up to begin with. So the only way this becomes relevant is if you or your team are horribly out of position to the point where you all got flanked by elites, because regular units are unlikely to get through 6 stamina shields anyway. At which point that 100% block reduction does actually help a lot, however you could also simply do a revive charge, meaning you won't get hit during the revive animation anyway, meaning you don't don't necessarily need this in those highly situational scenarios either. Besides this, it's unlikely to ever come up. If you are new to the Foot Knight and the teams you are playing with struggle to stay alive, it's a solid crutch to use, but honestly, you don't need this to be a solid revive bot anyway, and in the cases where you do want a revive bot, you'll get more use out of a handmaiden or mercenary. Then there is Gloryhound, which gives you 25% power after a charge. This is a good talent as it'll dramatically speed up your clear speeds versus hordes, is especially nice for some extra boss damage, and is such a good one for say Hill Scourge or Skittergate, and although it doesn't change any required hits to kill an elite, it doesn't hurt there either. That said, I would generally go with a Life of Battle, which reduces the cooldown of Valiant Charge by 30%, which comes down to 9 seconds. If you are on point in using Valiant Charge often and effectively, being able to use it a whole 9 seconds more often is very useful during chaotic moments. As Valiant Charge gives your team a lot of breathing room, being able to use this utility more often is very good, providing you aren't wasting that cooldown reduction. And finally, let's move on to item properties. There's two ways to build this, and they are the same for both the Executioner Sword and the Halbert. The defensive way and the offensive way, though the latter mainly helps with hordes. In general, I would go with the defensive way, which allows you to survive clutch moments more effectively and save your team from certain disasters, so we'll go over that one first. The trade for your melee weapon will be off balance. Off balance offers the interesting additional gameplay element of purposely blocking to increase the damage the enemy takes. This won't be relevant during hordes, but helps your team in clearing elites and bosses. Unfortunately, it doesn't change the amount of hits you would have to do with the Executioner Sword to kill, say, a Chaos Warrior, but nevertheless it does offer damage in the more dire scenarios. Property-wise, you want to get plus 2 stamina, which comes for 1 stamina shield, upping your total stamina shields to the perfect 6. And you of course want to roll plus 5% attack speed, as again, this is by far the most important property to have. The trade for your blunderbuss will be Scrounger, which means you will restore ammo on every critical hit. With the blunderbuss, and the Grudge Raker for that matter, your alternative attack is a hit with the butt of the weapon, these attacks can crit as well, and do count for Scrounger. Meaning, in moments where your team has the horde under control and you're running out of ammo, it's smart to hit them with the blunderbuss a few times to collect their teeth or whatever you use for ammo. This means you will practically never run out of ammo. Property-wise, you want to get plus 5% critical chance, which synergizes with set trait, and you want to get basically any power upgrade except power versus armored and monsters. The best option is going to be power versus Skaven, as the specials you are most likely not to one-shot are Warpfire or Gatling Skaven, and unlike power versus armored, power versus Skaven also helps with hordes if you need more temporary HP, and it helps with both the Rad Ogre and Stormfiend and Plague Monk Berserkers. 
For your necklace, you want to use Boon of Shalia as your trait. Boon of Shalia gives you 30% more healing, which works with your temporary HP, increasing the heal value they give you from 2 to 2.6, which gets rounded down to 2.5. This is easily the most consistent increase you can pick from any necklace traits. And because inevitably you will take damage at some point, more temporary HP means you will live longer, not to mention in paddock moments where you need to down a healing draft, this will be lovely as well. Property-wise, you want to go either with two types of damage reduction, or damage reduction and player health. For the charm, I would recommend Decanter as your trait. In general, concentration and speed are more useful than strength, so increased duration tends to be better than reduced duration but every effect. Proxy is also a great choice depending on your party setup. Ultimately, this one is very much preference, and chances are you are carrying the Grimoire anyway, so it doesn't matter that dramatically. Properties, however, do matter a lot, and will go with 5% attack speed, of course, making your total attack speed increase a lovely 15%. Secondly, we'll go with Power vs Skaven if you're using the Halbert, because this means you will one-shot the first Skaven clan rat, the rats with clothing on, as opposed to needing two body hits. And it helps you clear two bosses faster. With the Executioner Sword, you can pick anything that isn't Power vs Armored or Monsters. Armor doesn't actually work against Maulers or Chaos Warriors, they have a unique armor property, meaning it doesn't dramatically change any kill cutoff points with the Executioner's Sword, and you also can't get enough to kill Hordes dramatically faster, so either Power vs Skaven or Power vs Chaos will suit you best. And finally, for the Trinket, you'll generally want to pick Shrapnel, which helps your entire team out killing a boss or patrol pack faster. Property-wise, you want to get Curse Resistance if you ever pick up a Grimoire. In the case of a full Curse Resistance roll of 33%, this will merely lower your health to 56% instead of 33% with two Grimoires. Even in the case of just one Grimoire, it's a good health pool increase. Secondly, I would go with 5% movement speed, which luckily always rolls 5%, making the trinket easier to reroll, but this movement speed increase is a nice small quality of life upgrade in both the defensive and offensive department. Just remember that when you jump, you don't get these speed benefits. The second way to build this is to instead of off balance, get swift slaying on your melee weapon, get critical chance instead of plus two stamina, and instead get plus two stamina on your necklace, instead of one of the damage reduction or player health upgrades. Finally, you'd also get critical chance on your trinket instead of movement speed. This results in a build that will clear hordes faster, do about comparable damage versus bosses, depending on how often off balance would have triggered, but comes with the main downside of being quite a bit less defensive. And with that, we've come to the end of this Footnight Legend build guide. Thank you for watching. My name is Ben Haas, and I hope you enjoy the Foot Knight just as much as I love this charging, halberd-swinging, boss-bullying badass.